Hey everybody, my name is Ted Forbes and welcome back to another episode of The Art of Photography. Today we're going to talk about color film. Uh, last time we talked about black and white film types, we talked about what's available, what you could get, and today we're going to switch that over and we're going to talk about color. Now, specifically today we're going to talk about negative color film or C41, sometimes this is known as print film, um, and we'll do a separate episode for slide and transparency, chrome, that kind of thing. Um, but what you need to know about color film is that it is a lot like black and white in the sense that what you get in the end is a negative. It's the exact opposite um, and it's meant to be printed on an enlarger and that's kind of the way things were shot back in the day. Uh, C41 is a very common film type. C41 uh, refers to the chemical process that's used. There were other Others, um, once upon a time, but really this is the, the big one that you find now is C41. Um, I don't process my own C41 at home, and I know I've had this discussion with some of you guys at meetups because there's a lot of people who watch the show that do. It's not difficult um, if you have the chemicals to do it. There is temperature tolerance, but it, it can be done, and a lot of the guys that do it, you know, swear by it and love it and say it's cheaper than the lab. Um, for me, it's just an issue of time. I enjoy manipulating black and white film because there's a wide range of looks I can get. With color film, you're going to develop it one way you need to have it pretty exact and while you can get good results there's not a lot of difference in the types of experimentation you can do and so for me personally I have a lab that's close they're not expensive um, you know it's just easier for me to go to the lab I will put links in the show notes um, to some various labs that you can mail order to if you're interested and uh, we're gonna talk about C41 we're gonna look at how it fits into the big picture of film uh, what kind of looks it has and what types of film are available on the market today and what I would recommend to you guys so come on over and let's take a look at C41 process color film. Okay, so today we're going to talk about color print film or color negative film or some even call it process C41. And I want to talk about this a little bit. Last time we talked about, you know, typically what is known as true black and white film, which um, has its own set of chemicals, its own process to develop. And when you're done, your film turns into what is known as a negative, which means the lights become darks, the darks become lights, and you can print this on a larger and it reverses once again to be a positive. And the same holds true for color print film, which is typically a process known as C41. Now, don't get confused here. There is two types of color film uh, available. There is what we're looking at here, which is this C41 process film. That's just simply the scientific name of the process, which is C41. There have been others. The other process is, is color transparency film or E6 typically is what that is known scientifically as. And the difference is, is that E6 will give you, um, if you remember, if you're old enough to remember in the old days when people had slides made to put on a projector, it is not a negative. It is a positive and it was designed to be projected. So if you hold your film up to a light um, with slide film, you will see the actual picture it is not reversed and negative. This, however, today, what we're talking about is color print film, which is reversed. It is a negative. So if you hold your film up to a light, it's going to look funny. Lights are dark darks are lights and the colors are all backwards too and so um, typically they also make movie film uh, this way as well and it's designed to be scanned um, in you know the days when people used enlargers and made prints more often color film uh, the same principle as black and white you have a negative that you get off your film and you know when you put this on an enlarger and you do a color print essentially that negative is being exposed negatively and two negatives make a positive so your print in the end is actual as you see color or if you do it right it is and so I want to talk about this today. We're going to talk about slide film another time. I want to talk about E6 today. There are a lot less choices you're going to see. I'm going to, we'll do another page on the website. So if you, you know, look under wherever you're watching this and click the link, you can go to the art of TV and I will have a guide to the currently available um, color print films that you can get. And there essentially is, you know, a couple brands that are still making color print film. The big ones, Fujifilm and Kodak. And uh, then you also have brands such as Lomography, which I'll talk about in a second. And then also Rolly Agfa is making film as well. Now, real quick, I want to talk about, because in the last episode, I got a lot of wonderful comments and you guys were great. And one that I kept getting a lot was you forgot about these two film types and Ilford XP2. And then there's also Kodak the BW400CN. Um, these are both C41 process, but they are black and white films. I did not include them in the last episode because they, they're a different chemical process than true black and white films. These are C41 uh, films, much like the color, but they're designed to come out black and white. Um, and this is, you know, please don't gun me down for this. This is just a matter of opinion. I have not had just incredible results with either one of these, and that is just a personal preference. I'm not saying they're bad films. I'm just saying for me personally, I 
it's just it wasn't my thing. Um, but I know plenty of people that shoot on them and plenty of people who get really good results and it works for them and you might find that it works for you too. One thing that's handy if you're wondering, well, why would I ever shoot C41 black and white film? Well, if you don't have a way to process your film at home, um, this is really nice if you still have a grocery store or Walgreens or something that does process film, you can take these black and white C41s and they will you know, make black and white prints for you and develop your film for you in C41 process. So most labs like that, um, you know, just over the counter drugstore kinds of stuff don't do true black and white. They'll do the colors, but they, they just not set up for black and white. A professional photo lab will be set up for anything. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to keep this less than confusing, but anyway, those are the two types. There's Ilford XP2 and there's Kodak, uh, C41 black and white. And, you know, they just did not work for me, but I'm including them in this episode because we are talking about C41. These are C41 process. Now, another thing about C41, I get a question a lot that people say, well, you know, hey, what's your experience developing this at home? I do not develop color film at home. I do black and white at home, and I will tell you why. It's not because it's difficult or anything. In fact, I have two super fans of the show that keep telling me otherwise, and you know who you are. Chris Manis and Edmund White. Uh, but anyway, uh, both those guys have been on me before that, oh, you need to do it, and it's cheaper, and it's this, and it's that. And it, it, that's none of the reasons why I don't do it at home. The only reason is is because in the process... And we'll come back to some of these, uh, like the black and white film, but I've talked about this in past episodes. There's a lot of manipulation you can do um, with your chemicals, your development times, your temperatures to get different looks out of the black and white film. With color film, there is a lot, well, there's barely any room for experimentation. There is one way to process it. And that's not a bad thing. It just means that there's not much room for experimentation. So I have a lab handy, and it's just as easy for me to take it to the lab so I don't mess with it. It's less chemicals I have to keep at home. However, I like I said, I have uh, two gentlemen that watch the show that uh, I am friends with, and they both do it. And so, you know, if you're interested, uh, maybe start a discussion in the Flickr group or something. I'll put a link below, and that might be a good way to check this out. Uh, typically, the characteristics of, um, of C41 film just depends on the film you are interested in that you get. The, the main two that are available right now, there's Portra 400 uh, from Kodak and Ektar 100. And Ektar 100 has a beautiful, beautiful look to it. Um, if you go do Flickr searches on these, you'll see that the Ektar has really good color rendition in it, and there's something really beautiful about the way it saturates certain colors like reds and maybe blues and maybe slightly greens, but particularly those reds. And so all I did was a Flickr search on here, and I sorted by most interesting, and you can start to see some of the characteristics of this film. It is a very beautiful film to shoot on, um, quite lovely. That is the Kodak Ektar. Kodak Portra is a little more, um, of course, and I throw this up and it's got some experimental stuff, but it, 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 the colors are going to be very more accurate on this. In other words, true to life. They're not going to oversaturate certain things. The amazing thing about Kodak Portra is that the exposure latitude on it is just simply crazy. It's like, I think it's 12 stops of light. So this means that you're going to retain a lot of detail in shadows and you're also going to retain detail in highlights and you're going to get a really wide range out of this film um, that is one particular reason to shoot it now I also want to talk about pushing and pulling color film uh, particularly print film um, I don't know, and I will be the first to admit, I do not know enough about the C41 process. I did um, research this online, and the best that I could find is that there's a huge argument going on. Offline, I have talked to Edmund White, who watches the show. He does color film, and he has explained to me that really to push or pull the process, you have to understand that C41 is a very different and complicated process that is used to create a color negative. It's not as you know, obvious uh, in theory as black and white works. And so typically what you want to do is just, you know, you can actually change your box speed and you don't change the development time necessarily in C41. Now, somebody feel free to put a comment in and argue with me on this. Um, I don't know enough about it, and I'm not claiming to know enough about it. I do know that it's complex. I do know that you can push and pull, and probably what it's doing is because you have a greater latitude and exposure is that you're just leaning into it one way or the other. And I've seen people say what you want to do is keep it within a stop in either direction if you're pushing or pulling. And I've heard other people say that they've shot, you know, Kodak Portra up at 3200 and, you know, look around on the internet 
internet, you see the results and they look pretty good. So um, you do have some of the same effects that contrasts increase, the colors whack out just a little bit. But um, essentially, you can push and pull C41 as far as I can tell. I've had it pushed and pulled. I've just had a lab do it. So I can't tell you the technique behind it or, or what all is involved. And maybe somebody could chime in on the comments and talk about that. The other thing you can do that's interesting, if you want to start getting some color, you know, some looks or some certain effects, if that's what you're going for with shooting color film, which is great, you can do what's called cross-processing. And I've got some Flickr search results for cross-processing. What this means, is I mentioned earlier, there are two types of chemical process for color films. There's C41, which is what we're talking about today, and there's E6, which is slide film, we'll talk about next time. And basically what it, you do it, to cross-process is if you're going to a lab, you tell them you want it cross-processed. What that means is they're going to take your C41 film and they're going to develop it in E6 chemicals. And what it does is it works, but it has kind of a strange effect on the colors where greens start to become more prominent. Um, you start to get color casts. It has, I would argue they're actually predictable results, but like reds tend to pop. It depends on what colors you have in your scene. But you can see that these all have that kind of Martian quality to them that cross-processing is so beautiful and good at. You can also go the other way. You can shoot E6 film and have it processed in C41 chemicals. And so that's what cross-processing means, is that you're crossing into the other process to do your development. And so that can be fun to experiment with as well. The other thing that's kind of cool, and I'll go back over to the B&H side here, is that um, you have other companies that are starting to develop films, much like you do black and white, and some of the interesting things they are doing with it. Uh, by the way, I'm not going into the Fuji Pro 400. It's a great film I've used it before. Um, there are others. There's the Kodak Gold, which is more of a consumer quality film. And people get, I mean, you know, experiment around, just like with black and white. Um, you're probably going to get interesting results. You're going to like some better than others. It's really easy for me to sit here and tell you what works for me, but I don't think that's you know, uh, par for the course, if you will, or, or it's going to work for everybody. It's, you know, it's just, it's like personal preference. I can tell you what kind of shirts I like, but you may not be comfortable in them. So that kind of thing. Uh, but, uh, you're going to notice that Lomography has a bunch of stuff out now. Be forewarned. Lomography, to my knowledge, does not actually make film. They repackage it. And I don't know what they're repackaging. Somebody might be able to chime in on the comments on that. It's much like the, um, the Arista black and white films that are repackaged. Um, the kind of the consensus is, is their 400 is Tri-X and then and their other stuff is foma pan. Um, and that's what Lomography are doing as well. It doesn't mean it's bad film. It just means, you know, don't be fooled. It's something else, most likely. Um, they're, to my knowledge, um, not setting up with a factory. They're repackaging somebody else's film. Um, Roly Agfa has a couple things that are really interesting. They have this one called Nightbird. Um, I have not used this, but it lo does look very interesting. Um, a couple points is, you know, they announced that they roll it backwards, so the, the light's going to diffuse through the film, which is kind of interesting. Um, it works well in low light, and basically <coughs> what they're saying is longer exposures are going to have warmer colors, and shorter exposures are going to have cooler colors. So probably what they're doing is playing with the C41 process, and what you're doing is actually pushing and pulling the film, and it's just sensitized to get results like that. If you go do a quick search on... Um, on Flickr for Nightbird or Redbird, either one, you can see that you have these really whacked out reds and stuff. It almost has an intense look. In fact, it's way even more intense than what you see with new cross process. So I think some of these films are probably worth experimenting with as well. Um, a little grainy, which, you know, has a certain look to it if you're into that. Um, a very lo-fi quality with these whacked out reds that are going into it, which is really cool. Um, the other one they have, this is Nightbird. They have one called Redbird, which has a similar effect, which again, with the with very warm colors, very warm warm tones, and then I'm assuming these are shorter exposures that end up being cooler. Um, they also look a little faded out and grainy, and like I said, I, I haven't shot this, so this is just my guess is that it's being manipulated. So anyway, some really interesting, cool stuff, and if you're into color and you want to experiment, there's this is a wonderful time to be doing so because there are a wide variety of films available to do so. So anyway, all that to say, just to recap a little bit, um, I'm on the B&H site, um, but you know, I will link to all the available color films in various formats, so click on the link below this video or head over to the art of photography TV, which is our website and uh, you can peruse there and we're going to keep guides to these. So, you know, when you're interested in shooting black and white film, you want to know what's available. We'll have a page for that as we will for both color processes as well and probably instant and some other things. 
So anyway, uh, check that out. Um, remember that you know this is a negative color film, so your film will come out in negative form. Um, not a big deal if you're scanning or printing either one. It's very versatile, very easy to use, and at the moment, it's still pretty easy to get developed just about anywhere. Walmart, Walgreens, anything with a wall in it. Um, if you're in the UK, any drugstore, um, you know they're becoming less and less, but it's still easy to have done. Um, you can cross process this, which means you can go throw it in the E6 chemicals. Uh, you can process it at home in your own chemicals. I don't, but uh, perhaps you will. Um, and you know some other things about it too. They just have different characteristics to them. In the case of something like Ektar, which is a beautiful film, which I love, the intense reds, um, the beautiful blues, you know, the wonderful saturation. Or if you're into the Portra, which has more accurate colors and an extremely wide exposure latitude that just is simply stunning. Um, these are really good choices uh, to go for. Um, and then also, you know, you have Roly Agfa, uh, stuff like the Redbird, the Nightbird. Um, they have a more accurate color, this uh, CN200 that they're using as well. And don't forget that there are two black and white color, <laughs> this sounds weird to say, black and white color films, black and white C41 process. They're usually called chromogenic. Um, is the technical term for that. So anyway, um, so, you know, go have a look um, and experiment. That's really the best thing I can tell you to do. Um, you know, grab your camera and go shoot some film and figure out what you like. So uh, anyway, I hope you find this useful. Go check out the links. And uh, that's color film in the C41 process. Okay, so that has been more or less an overview of the types of C41 process film that you can find commercially available today. Um, C41 film is a lot of fun to shoot on. Um, I think... In terms of color, and we're going to talk about slide film next time, um, transparencies, chromes, it has a different look than C41 does. C41, this is really kind of a weird you know, way to put it, but it's kind of falls somewhere in the middle between black and white and slide film. And that, that you, have, you end up having some of the graininess and some of the grit that you have, much like black and white film, but it is color, much like the transparency film still a negative like black and white. So it's kind of, you know, you can think of it as the middle of the road type of film. Um, there are a lot of formats of this available commercially today. The, the Hollywood movie industry still shoots a lot of stuff on film. This is changing, but there still has been a demand for it. And, you know, it's interesting. I, you know, Kodak in the last couple of years has, has introduced new film types. Vision 3 came out a couple of years ago. Um, you know, you look at the Porta series, it's been around a while and the improvements that they're making on that. And, you know, it's really interesting to see um, you know, what we can still do. You know, one of my favorite color photographers of all time is Saul Leader. I've covered him on the show before. If you're not familiar with him, Google him, go look him up on the website, theartofphotography.tv, and you can see what I had to say about him. Um, Saul is one of my favorite photographers, and he did a lot of personal work that was in color that was rediscovered. This was all done in the 50s, 60s, was rediscovered in the 90s. And he's become kind of this color fine art guy. And you know, his work is always amazing to me, but he did a lot of experimentation with color film, with C41. And the, you know, shooting on expired film, shooting on film that's been overheated. There's a number of things you can do to kind of experiment with the look that you're getting. And I think the whole point of shooting on color film in general is to get the film look. And you, you have colors that aren't necessarily 100% accurate, but there is an emotional quality to them and, and this beauty to them that really makes them sing. And you know, for me, in this day and age where we have digital that's very easy to get to and very easy to shoot on, uh, this is the reason I still shoot on color films. So I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found this uh, helpful. And until next time, it's been The Art of Photography, and I'll see you then. Take care.